So let's explain this problem as a projectile motion and let's set it out the way that it will help you understand how to solve it. So the first thing to do is always read the question. I hope you've done that. Understand the question so you get in a sense of what's going on. And one of the key ways to help you understand the question is to draw a diagram, which is what this third letter, the D, stands for, as well as the data. So here we have our bullet here, and it's going to be fired in this direction, and it's going to undergo projectile motion like so. And we can now label various aspects on there. So the first thing we're going to label on there is our velocity, which is 1100 meters per second. We also know it's going to drop vertically. It's 1.6 meters. And now we can also label the things we're looking for. We need to know the total horizontal displacement, which is this amount. And we need to know the time it takes to go down. And so again, I label that. So everything is now labeled. We're now into the second part of the rude aspect, and that is the data. Always set out your questions with writing the data first. So again, we say V-U-A-S-T, and I do V-U-A-S-T on the other side. Now, why do I do that? because I've broken it down into the vertical components and the horizontal components and projectile motion says that the vertical component is independent of the horizontal component. Now, we can now label all the data and I suggest that you only write the data of the things that you've got and the things you're looking for. So final velocity in this question, we're not interested. Initial velocity, we do. We know it's falling down, so it's going to be equal to zero meters per second. Our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Our displacement is 1.6 meters downwards, but it's in the downward direction, so that's negative 1.6 meters. And time is what we're looking for, so we write the letter. On the other side, we can put these two together because it's constant velocity. So it's an average velocity, which is going to be constant, and we know that is going to be equal to 1100 meters per second. The acceleration, of course, is zero. It's called some velocity, so we can ignore it. And the displacement is the thing we're looking for. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm also going to put the time there, because that's the time we need to work out as well. That is, the time it takes to go down is the time it takes to go across horizontally. And that's going to be the key to solve this problem, because that's what we're looking for as well. And the final piece of the puzzle is the E part, and that's write down the equations that you need. So in this case, we're only interested in the vertical to work out the time. All equations of motion have four variables, so therefore you need three to solve them, and so therefore you've got the three. So in this case, A, U, and S, and T are given, so I have S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared is my formula. If I substitute everything in, I get negative 1.6 is equal to that zero, so that we leave it off. It's a half multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by my t squared. And if I rearrange that, I won't do the maths for you in terms of setting it out, you'll get a value is equal to 0.571 seconds. So that's the time it takes to go down. And now we also know that that's the time it takes to go across. So what's our formula, our equation? In this case, our displacement is always equal to the average velocity multiplied by the time. And since our velocity is 1100 and our time is 0.571, we now have a final velocity of 628.6 meters. And there is our solution to our projectile motion problem.